Um, I want you to note the comparison to three apostolic pillars of today's church to those noted in Galatians 2 when dealing with Paul. You know, it is puzzling to me how there are people who say, well, there's no, there's no apostles today that believe that they are like the, the, the apostles of Christ, like the 12 and like Paul, but yet they want to make the comparison to that particular, for that example in Galatians 2, in this particular instance. They make the correlation with that. It seems like there's a, a, a something's lost in translation here. I mean, it makes perfect sense. If you are comparing that in Galatians 2 to the Lakeland commissioning, then one could deduce from that that you're comparing apples to apples, meaning that you think that you have, you're like a first century apostle that had the governing authority. And that's the premise of the new apostolic reformation. It's not just in people that believe in apostles and prophets today. And there are people that make the distinction, even in scripture, that there are different types of apostles. There were apostles that were not the apostles of Christ that were commissioned by Jesus himself. They were apostles to the church, for example, like Barnabas, Andronicus, a few others that are mentioned. Why don't they compare themselves to those apostles? If they're saying that they're not like the ones, and and let's not forget, multiple times in these books, they keep saying, restore restore. We're going to, God's restoring the apostles. He's restoring the prophets. In Peter Wagner's book, um, Dominion, I believe, that uh, was republished, by the way, I don't want to get ahead of myself. He said in that book, in one of the first chapters, he said in the 70s that, that they finally acknowledged, that they started acknowledging the office of the intercessor, that the intercessor was restored. Then in the 80s, the prophet was restored. And then in the 90s, that's when the apostle was restored. But if you want to, and I said this before in another episode, but to restore means it's not continuation. There's a difference between continuation and restoring. If you believe in the restoration of the apostles and prophets, then you want them put back in their original condition, meaning that they had governing authority. Contrary to what some people may say, there are people that actually believe that they have governing authority over you. And if you question them, then they'll strip you of titles. They'll they'll basically make an example out of you and they will make it to, they'll put you back in a corner and put you in a position to where you have no other option but to leave. And they will demonize you and they will say all kinds of things about you before you leave and then after you leave because you went against the grain and you questioned. This is not just me speaking from personal experience. This is a story that is told time and time and time again by many other people. It may change the scenery. It may change the individual who's calling themselves an apostle. But nevertheless, the, the narrative is still the same. And people are being damaged because of this movement. And they're being damaged when people come out like Daniel Kalinda, and he's making these broad blanketed statements, which he doesn't like being done to them. So now he's going to do it to those of us that call things into question. When you make blanketed statements and you tell people this movement's nonsense, that it doesn't exist, that it's just a conspiracy theory, that you all are just Illuminati conspiracy theorists and you're heresy hunters and you sit in your parents' basement and eat Cheetos all day and play video games then you're sticking your head in the sand and you're denying the fact that people are being spiritually abused. 